Well, in 1982, Dr. Neil Agat was found hanging in his cell at the then John Forster Square police station. Tomorrow, some 40 years later, the High Court in Johannesburg is expected to rule on an application to overturn the apartheid inquest finding. That inquest concluded that Agat committed suicide while in police detention. But the Ahmed Kathrada Foundation believes more than 100 freedom fighters were killed at John Forster Square under the apartheid regime, and one of them was Ahmed Timal. His nephew, Imtiaz Kaji, still fights for justice to this day, and he joins us live now to discuss tomorrow's expected ruling. Imtiaz, thanks for joining us. I always say to you condolences because I still feel that it's a death that is... Uh, well, a murder that is still so painful for so many, so many South Africans, especially your family. Um, it took three years after uh, your uncle's murder was declared suicide to uh, being liable for prosecuting uh, an apartheid policeman. And by that time, three years later, when he'd gone to court, Jao Rodriguez, he died. And so you didn't get the justice that you felt you deserved. No morning, Anika. M most certainly, I think. I think first and foremost, you know, our warm wishes and greetings goes out to the Eggert family for tomorrow as they anticipate the the judgment to be handed, as well as to their legal team, you know, led by Advocate Howard Vani. But you know, we must make it very, very clear that the reopening of inquest is not a favour that the state or anybody else is rendering to a party out of families. It's the moral obligation of the state to reopen these matters. And, you know, it's very apt that we look at the preamble of the Constitution of South Africa that states, we, the people of South Africa, recognize the injustice of the past and we honor those who suffered for justice and freedom in our land, unquote. And the painful reality is that, yes, I've been also been there on the 12th of October 2017, where my uncle's um, uh, inquest ruled that he did not commit suicide but was murdered in police detention. And what has transpired since then is the painful reality that there is absolutely no political will on the part of this particular government to hold those accountable and responsible for the death of my beloved uncle. And like you correctly stated, I mean, Jao Rodriguez had 19 court appearances. He made an application to the full bench of the South Gauteng High Court that ruled in May 2019 that his application was dismissed. The full bench also ruled that the NDPP must take action against Tory Pretorius and Chris McAdam for their conduct. And today, there's been no action taken against them. A year and six months later, the, the SCA in Bloemfontein again dismisses the application. And then thereafter, the Constitutional Court simply drags their feet and don't listen to this particular matter, which resulted in Rodriguez passing on and this matter not being heard at the Constitutional Court in this particular country. So a painful reality that awaits the Eggert family and many, many other families is that, yes, the reopening of a party era inquest is very significant, but they don't give us answers. And I think what we are desperately looking for is answers. And that is precisely why it was imperative, imperative that Joao Rodriguez should have his day in court and be held accountable for his actions. And Anika, this has never transpired. No. I mean, the TRC uh, recommended that 300 cases be reopened for further investigation. We've got the Craddock Falls family, for instance, still waiting. Uh, do you think from the dealings you've had with the NPA that it's a matter of lack of political will or just sheer lack of capacity? I think, Anika, before we go to the NPA, you know, we must ask ourselves the question as to why the interrogators of Neil Agat, Ahmed Timol, and many, many others were not subpoenaed to testify at the TRC. Because they were all healthy and they were, well, and they were living. And the TRC failed us in that particular regard. When it comes to the National Prosecuting Authority, they set up a priority crimes litigation unit in terms of a proclamation issued by President Mbeki in 2003. And around 2005, 2006, there was an interministerial task team that investigated and looked into all these TRC matters and they shut all of them down. So there is a history and a timeline of the NPA not carrying out its mandate and its responsibilities as per the recommendations of the TRC. And we now know very well that there have been claims that have been made of political interference that lay squarely on the shoulders of President Mbeki and the former Minister of Justice, Bridget Mabanda. And again, to date, the NPA has not pursued either one of them to basically get their responses to the accusations made against them. So for me, it's very clear 
it's got nothing to do with, with, with capacity and resources. It has to do with the political will, and it comes back to the statement issued by the Declat Foundation of an agreement that was made between the ANC and the National Party that these matters would not be pursued further. And I think that is what transpired. That's the so-called secret agreement that uh, was made, and I know it's been brought up before by the families of the Craddock Four. Who do you think is likely to be implicated should these operatives and these apartheid heads, if you like, I mean, the, the big heads should have really faced prosecution too. Um, should, who's more likely to be exposed here? Well, I mean, based on, based on the uh, uh, accusations made by, by F.W. de Klerk, uh, the late F.W. de Klerk, those made by the legal counsel of Joao Rodriguez, um, that there was political interference, that there was a secret amnesty deal. And like I said, it goes back to the ANC and the Nationalist Party. And what doesn't make sense to me is that why the NPA doesn't pursue this matter further. Because we've had affidavits uh, uh, submitted by the former NDPP uh, uh, Vusi Piccoli and Anton Ackerman uh, making references to this political interference. This was echoed only in 2019 by Chris McAdam in Tory Pretorius and again against President Mbeki and Minister Bridget Mabanda. So why don't they pursue Bridget Mabanda and Thabo Mbeki to get their response to the allegations made against them? But for me, ultimately, Anika, it, it, it boils down to or my analysis of it is that, that there was a secret agreement that was made uh, to prevent uh, post-TRC prosecutions. And I think it is clearly revealed in the more than two and a half decades later that they've passed on that absolutely no political will exists till today. And the Joe Rodriguez matter best testimony to this.